What's going on, everybody? Uh, I'm going to be making another video today. Today we're going through all the records I bought in August. Another vinyl update. Uh, much longer than the last one. I got a lot of records this time, so let's go and get into it. First one I grabbed. Um, I've been hitting the soul, R&B, and like funk sections a lot recently. Uh, just because you can find shit in there real cheap. And it's almost always going to be pretty good. And so uh, I've just been hitting that pretty hard recently. And you can tell throughout this collection of records that I've been hitting that hard. Because uh, and a lot of times I'll open these records and just know like one song on them. And then the rest of the album is just flames. And this is a good example of that. This is Touch Me in the Morning, Diana Ross. First off, fucking love this cover. I just It's so beautiful. The blue, the pink, her. Just love this cover. And um, uh, if we're going into music, I knew Touch Me in the Morning. Beautiful song. It's amazing. I love that song. And then, but across the board, the arrangements are all beautiful. Uh, she has a wonderful cover of Imagine by John Lennon on here. And I'm just super happy with this. You know, you got that old Motown label on there. This is a later Motown release. This is in, I believe, 1970. So this is later on in Motown's lifespan. But moving past that, definitely check this album out. Uh, we got Sade. Sade is an artist I've been meaning to get into for a while now. Um, and this was a very good place to start. Because every single track on here is, again, flames. Uh, very jazzy arrangements. She, all does, she does them all herself. Uh, her vocals are just on point all the time. One of the best vocalists ever. And just tracks like Is It a Crime, the opening track, uh, Jezebel. Mind-blowing what she does with her arrangements and what she does with her voice and her stories. Like, I'm so sad that I didn't get into her sooner. And this is a really good place to start if you want to get into her. All, again, beautiful cover, too. Like, what the fuck? This is the blue, her. Like, goddamn. Just, you need to stop being so fucking beautiful all the time. Next one I got. Fucking Sly and the Family Stone. Stand. This album is funk perfection. This is exactly what I want out of my funk music. On top of that, again, another amazing cover. Uh, a lot of beautiful colors. Um, on the inside, if you go to where they have the band members, you got like these beautiful, colorful photos of everybody they were performing with, and then with their baby photos like layered on top of it. You got one of Sly on the back. And there's some just great tracks on here. Like the title track, Stand, very political. Always a fan of that. Anytime somebody's not afraid to like speak their mind, talk on something, politics, to something that your people might want not want to hear, I always think that's ambitious and awesome. Um, on top of that, they also got Sex Machine, which is just a 30-minute jam of just nonstop amazingness. So if you want to get into Sly the Family Stone, this is a fucking great album. And I got it for two fucking dollars. How could I pass that up? It's, it's so good. It's so good. Next one I got, moving out of soul, R&B, funk, that whole territory. Bob Dylan, another side of Bob Dylan. Um, this is definitely one of his more lighthearted releases, and I think that's why they probably called it this. Everything just seems more upbeat, even when he's tackling more difficult subjects, as he usually does. But like right from the get-go, you got tracks like All I Really Want to Do, and that immediately just sounds like happier, fun. Bob Dylan, which I think at this point not a lot of people had heard before, like a f fun, upbeat Bob Dylan, because this got released, if I'm not wrong, between uh, The Times They Are Changing and The Freewheeling Bob Dylan. I could be wrong on that, though, because those are heart-wrenching, horribly sad albums, and I think Columbia came up to him and was like, hey, do you mind picking it up a notch? Like, Jesus Christ, dude. He, he probably was like, eh, whatever, you know. But still, he still made a pretty good album. It's very underrated, but I still think this is a decent album. Not one of his best. My favorite is always The Times That They Are Changing. I love that album to death, but yeah. This is still a pretty good in, in, like, item in his catalog. So I'm glad, to be, I'm glad to be owning it. 
Next one, another folk album. Um, this is City in Color. Bring Me Your Love, right? Yeah. This is a... Oh, let me get that in the picture. This is a folk artist. Um, kind of pulls a lot from Bob Dylan. Um, nowhere near as lyrically talented as Bob Dylan, but uh, this is mainly a nostalgia trip for me. I used to listen to this album all the time when I was in high school. And while I kind of just insulted him there, he's not that bad. I still think this album is pretty damn good. Uh, got some nice art in there. You know, skull, head. Pretty sick. The lyrics, got the, got the liner notes, all that kind of, all that jazz. It's on black, so that's not too important. I'm not going to bother taking those out. Double LP, very nice pressing, heavy. But, yeah, I would listen to this album all the time in high school, just on repeat. And I just loved his... his, his writing is very straightforward, not too poetic or deep or anything like that. You can usually get what he's talking about within the first minute. And so, but there's still beautiful tracks on here, like Sleeping Sickness and The Girl. Uh, definitely tracks you should check out. But, yeah, I'm happy I finally found this because I've been looking for it for a while, just... Never bothered to like go out of my way and buy it on Discogs or something like that, but if I found it, I would grab it, and I finally did. So thought to that that was the day. So yeah, definitely check it out if you're into folk music. Pretty good. Next one I grab another one where I just knew one track and decided ah, fucking buy it. Whatever. I've been wanting to get into him for a while. This is history of Otis Redding. The one track I knew was try a little tenderness, which is an incredible track. Um. And, uh, holy shit, am I happy with the rest of this album. Uh, every single track on here is amazing. He does a version of Respect. He does, uh, Fa 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 which is a really, really cool track. And then, um, just everything on here is wonderful. Like, he's an amazing performer, amazing arrangements, horns, you got everything on there. Songwriting, lyrics, vocals, and the man could tear up a fucking stage, like, one of the one of the greats in terms of like just soul music and I'm glad I finally got found a record to get into him. If you want to get into him, this is pretty much all of his best tracks onto one release. So very happy with it. Uh, next one. Um, actually kind of disappointing. Um, I am a huge Animal Collective fan. Huge. I love almost all of their albums and I been listening to them for years now, and I fucking love Animal Collective. This is a disappointment. Um, this is Tangerine Reef. This is their, I guess, soundtrack to their this, this visual, all recording choral and vi videos of choral. And uh, so the songs are very ambient, very experimental, which is not a bad thing. Experimental Animal Collective is sometimes their best. I mean, listen to their early stuff. But something about this just did not hold me at all. And I was so excited that they're releasing something new. I pre-ordered this, and I didn't realize it wasn't like an LP. It was, you know, this visual arts project. And to be totally honest, I'm kind of disappointed in it, and I wish that was not the case, because I, Animal Collective is an excellent project. Um, you got some nice, like imagery of coral on the pictures and then you got some more on the back here um it's on a nice hefty green record both of them are but yeah eventually i might sell this but i'm also just such a big animal collective fan i might just keep it because i love them but yeah uh, a little disappointed by this but still it's animal collective it's it's definitely not bad, just compared to the rest of the releases, it's pretty weak. Alright, next two I got. I got... Uh, kind of bought them for the same reasons. Again, new one track, uh, listen to the rest of the album, fire, all across the board. Uh, Commodores, uh, In the Pocket, literally hilarious album art and everything. They got all their jeans embroidered with their own logo. That's a fucking baller ass move, if you ask me. Um, but yeah, I knew the song "Lady, You Bring Me Up," it's catchy as hell, and so is everything else on here. I was very, very happy with this. Again, three bucks. Why would I pass it up? 
And then the next one is OJ's Backstabbers. I knew Love Train. Love Train! Love Train! And everything else on here is about as good as that song. So, again, I need to start buying more records like this and because I don't have a lot of records from this style of band, the catchy, funky artists like OJ's and Commodore's and even like Lionel Richie's like solo stuff. I just don't own enough of these records and I need to start buying them because one, they're cheap and two, they're almost always good. Yeah, I'm, again, very happy with this as well. Significantly less ridiculous album art than the last one, which means I, this is like, you can't really beat that. So, yeah, they did okay, but like, you, you can't match. You can't match this. All right, next one I got. Only a couple more now. I got an continuing with anti reissuing uh, Tom Waits releases. This is Blue Valentine. Uh, this is another one in the same vein as say like Foreign Affairs or Small Change, loungy, jazzy, so songwriter, whiskey drenched voice. It's Tom Waits. You know the drill. Uh, this one I got on a very hefty, clear record. And this has some of his saddest songs ever. I mean, just listen to fucking A Christmas Card from a Hooker in Minneapolis. That song is heartbreaking. It's one of the best songs he's ever written, and it makes you want to fucking tear up, man. Like, shed that one manly guy in a bar tier like it, it's that good it's yeah so yeah Tom Waits is always amazing I just want to grab as many records by him as I can I don't think he's released like a bad album ever at least that's my opinion like even his later releases have not been bad at all like he's just his entire career he's just been amazing and it, I, I love him to death so Tom Waits Blue Valentine alright next one this is a heavy hitter right here. Heavy fucking hitter. Be the Cowboy. Mitski. If you couldn't tell already, all this shit fucking right here. Mitski, Mitski, Mitski. And then this thing over here is also Mitski. I love Mitski. I love Mitski. And I pre-ordered this shit, and holy hell was I not disappointed. This album might be one of the best albums that's come out this year. I love this album. It is just... Most tracks don't even go over three minutes. But her personality, her performances, her songwriting all just beam through this album. It's... Oh, it, it's, and it's catchy, but at the same time it can be very potent and like lyrically beautiful. Her voice is so womanly and beautiful. And like... I got it on this nice Coke bottle Kalir record. Um, like, I I thought Puberty 2 was going to be my favorite album of hers, but like, holy crap. She may have beaten it. And I was actually very lucky. I got to see her on August 16th, I believe, and that was the day before this album came out, and she put on an incredible show. Her show was basically... She normally would play bass and, you know, just stand at the mic, play bass, sing the songs. She gave bass duties away to another musician and hired a uh, choreographer to essentially create interpretive dance moves for the entire show. And I, I, I had no idea what to expect, and it, was, it blew me away. I'd never seen a concert like this before. It was her presence was just like room silence. It caused everybody to just be like, oh my god, what is she gonna do? And the fact, I just didn't expect that out of her. And she just one-ups my expectations every second. And I, I love her to death. And this album is a, a testament to just how amazing she is. And then on the other side of things, uh, at the same time, when I pre-ordered that, I bought this. This is Angel Olsen with Phases. This is her collection of demos and B-sides and unreleased tracks, stuff like that. Uh, a lot of them sound pretty rough, pretty raw, as you would expect from a demos collection. Um, 
but yeah, there's still some wonderful tracks on here. But I grabbed this because I was I'm going to see Angel Olsen on the 29th, and it's a solo tour, and I imagine she's probably going to be playing a lot of these songs. So I wanted to get familiar with these kind of songs, and it's still a really good demos collection. Got this nice poster of her right there. Probably never put putting that up, but it looks pretty cool. Cool to have. Got a lyrics, and the cool thing about this is actually I'm not sure if you can see that. But they, uh, uh, yeah, you can't probably fucking see that. Uh, there's a section on here where it tells you in what sessions she recorded these demos. So a lot of these say My Woman Sessions or Burn Your Fire for No Witnesses demos or like sessions. And so it's cool to see where these songs lie in her career. And it's all around. There's some really great demos on here. You got Fly on Your Wall. Special, which you can really tell is a My Woman demo because it sounds like something you'd hear. Sounds like Sister or Woman off of that album. The longer cuts, the ones that just kind of wind on, slowly grow and grow and grow and progress. It sounds like those songs. So yeah, I'm very happy with this. Just on a black record, didn't bother getting any. It was like 10 bucks on sale at Secretly Society or Secretly, whatever their store is called. I think it's Secretly Society. But yeah, very happy with this. I'm very happy with the Mitski record as well. I'm very happy with a lot, all these records I bought today. So, that's it. Thank you for watching, and I'll make sure to be back with another video pretty soon. See you around.